हाजिर सर ओके तो स्टार्ट करो है तो ओके सो आवर टॉपिक इज पेल्विक ऑर्गन प्रोलैप्स एंड इन द मीन टाइम इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस एंड इफ माय ऑडियो इज नॉट ऑडिबल देन प्लीज स्टॉप मी ओके सो पेल्विक ऑर्गन प्रोलैप्स ओके फ्रॉम द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ गाइने एंड ऑब्स्ट्रेटिक्स ओके सो सो व्हाट इज पेल्विक ऑर्गन प्रोलैप्स it is the protrusion of pelvic organs into or out of the vaginal canal okay uh, in surgery we have rectal prolapse and in gyne ops when the pelvic organs uh, protrude out of the vaginal canal then it is pelvic organ prolapse okay and it's very common in our part of the country okay so we, we need to learn about it we need to know how to treat it okay okay now uh, let's study anatomy for some time because anatomy is very important while to understand what pelvic organ prolapse is okay so so uh, i hope you can see the cursor uh this is the uterus okay and this is the vagina okay so this is the uterus and this is the vagina now the anterior to the vagina is urinary bladder and from the bladder goes out urethra and anterior to the urinary bladder we have symphysis pubis okay and posterior to the uh, uterus in the posterior part of the uterus there is rectum and the rectum goes to the anal canal and posterior there are few ligaments we'll study about that later okay again i repeat this is uterus and this is the vagina and there is some angulation and we'll study about that as well okay so this is the most now uh, there are support of the uterus okay the so whenever these supports uh, whenever there is support of the uterus then only the uterus can stay on in its position okay so what are the supports okay so the support of the uterus are first there are mechanical support then muscular supports then fibromuscular support so muscular supports means muscles fibromus and mechanical means it's not related to muscles and ligaments rather it's related to the position of the uterus and all okay so firstly the mechanical support the uterine axis so why am i saying uterine axis let's go back to the previous picture so you can see here the uterus is tilted anteriorly and this is vaginal canal okay and the uterus is tilted anteriorly so so this prevents the uterus from falling uh, falling down okay so if the uh, this is called antiversion okay this is called antiversion this is very important term for you guys this is antiversion so whenever the uterus is antiverted it's good it's a normal position okay so so the first step in uh, prolapse is this uterus the antiverted uterus goes backward somewhat like this okay and the and the uterus and vagina there is no angle between them okay and there is more chance of prolapse whenever something is straight goes inside a hole then there is chance of prolapse rather it is angulated so which prevents from prolapse okay have you understood this okay and then yep. next is angle of antiversion okay antiversion you can see v here so is the angle between cervix and vagina okay that's a good mnemonic to remember okay angle of antiversion means angle between cervix and vagina so angle of antiversion means this is the cervix and this is the vagina so this angle is angle of antiversion okay and and the next is angle of antiflexion okay it is the angle between cervix and ut uterus so within the uterus also there is some angulation you can see here it is somewhat somewhat concave okay towards the bladder side it is somewhat concave okay 
so this is angle of anti flexion so uterus is anti flexed and anti verted okay now moving on to the muscles so you guys must be knowing about the pelvic diaphragm okay is formed by the levator any muscles okay you should know the names of the levator any muscles the pubic coccygeus iliococcygeus and ischiococcygeus okay the pelvic diaphragm forms something like a basin okay where all the pelvic organs rest okay and the next is perineal body so from your anatomy you must be knowing about perineal body perineal body is formed by the confluence of different muscles okay and you need to make all the muscles by heart and the final is urogenital diaphragm okay urogenital diaphragm there is the superficial layer and deep layer of the urogenital diaphragm please revise your anatomy okay these three are also a good mus muscle support for the uterus and now moving on to the ligaments okay there are 1 2 3 3 three main important ligaments and these three ligaments form the tri radiate ligament okay it is also called the peri cervical ligament okay i'll show a picture okay so you can see here this is the cervix and posteriorly you have uterosacral ligament okay i repeat posteriorly you will have uterosacral from the uterus to the sacrum okay so the name is quite informative here from uterus to the sacrum is uterosacral and in the transverse side there is transverse cervical ligament okay this is the most important ligament for the support of uterus is the strongest and the most important okay and anteriorly you have pubo cervical pubo means pubic bone or symphysis pubis okay pubo cervical okay from pubic symphysis to cervix pubo cervical and this is also an important ligament so these three different ligaments form the peri cervical ring and this uh, just imagine the three ligaments are holding the cervix in position okay and whenever there is injury or weakness in these ligaments then there can be prolapse okay now so this is support of uterus in you can learn in one way the other way to learn is upper tier middle tier and inferior tier okay so upper tier the upper part of the uterus somewhere around the fundus okay so if a question comes uh, write the supports of uterus uh, you write the upper tier middle tier and lower tier okay and you can add this as well but this is just for your information okay the real thing is here okay okay so upper tier is quite weak because it is just due to the antiverted position and the endopelvic fascia so what is endopelvic fascia endopelvic fascia all the all the fascias except the one which we talked right now okay all those fascias in the pelvis are endopelvic fascia okay and the round ligament and the broad ligament okay do you know what the round ligament is someone just tell me what is round ligament where does it originate anyone just guess so you must have learned about it in the this anatomy so round ligament it starts in the upper part of the uterus in the cornu so what is the cornu of the uterus the fundus is there and the body is there okay so the point where the fundus and the body meet it's quite near to the opening of the fallopian tube so it originates there and it goes to the uh, this inguinal canal okay so and somewhat the round ligaments helps the uh, uterus in uh, the antiverted position okay so the round ligament helps the uterus to be in an antiverted position okay so it's in the upper part of uterus so it comes in the upper tier okay and the last is broad ligament okay broad ligament is the uh, 
visceral peritoneum of the uterus. Okay, and th there is, this is also helps to support the uterus. Now coming to the middle part. Middle part is around the cervix. Okay, so is the strongest support as we discussed earlier. And there are these three ligaments. And now the inferior tire. Okay, is an indirect support and it's given by the pelvic floor muscles. That is levator any and urogenital diaphragm. Okay. Okay, are you, are you understanding till now? Any problem? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, now again, there is some more anatomy for you. So this is levator muscles, levator any muscles. All the we are seeing from up, above. Okay, this is the anal canal, this is the vagina, and this is the uh, urethra. Okay, and this is urogenital diaphragm, and the rest is so all is levator any. Okay, it's like a basin I told you earlier. Okay, the basin where you wash your face. Okay, so and this way, this thing is supporting the. Uh, uterus in its position, uterus and all the other pelvic organs. Okay, so you, levator muscles forms a hammock like attachment. Hammock means something like that. Uh, mm, do you know what hammock is? Have you ever seen a hammock? Yes, yes sir. Okay, so it's just like that. Okay. The hammock, the one part is attached here. Just imagine like that. The other part is attached here. And this thing is somewhat curved. Okay. Now, we studied about the supports of uh, uterus. Now, let's see what are the supports of vagina. Okay. So, vagina, there are uh, quite different supports. Okay. So, in level one support, there is the this cardinal cardinal ligament is transverse cervical ligament. Okay, this transverse cervical ligament has three names. One is cardinal ligament, the other is transverse cervical ligament itself, and the last name is McIndroe ligament. Okay, so it has three names. You can use any names. Okay, so this is level one support is given by the same support which gives support to the cervix, okay? Because cervix and the starting of vagina is near, okay? Now, the cardinal or the uterus uh, transverse cervical ligament, and the next is uterus ligament, attachment to the posterior cervix and upper vagina, okay? So this uh, is the level one support of the vagina, okay? And it allows the vagina to be supported by the levator plate, and position the cervix just superior to the level of ischial spine. So, cervix, the normal position of the cervix is at the level of ischial spine. Okay, please remember that. It's quite important. The normal level of the cervix is at the level of ischial spine. Okay, so, so it, it helps the um, vagina to be supported. Okay. So, you might be wondering what levator plate this levator plate is the part of the levator any above which there is the vaginal canal, okay, not the opening, the canal, okay. It is the uh, point of the levator any above which the vagina rests, we can say like that, okay. A defect leads to apical prolapse, interracial, okay, we'll see about that later. Now, level two. Level two means paravaginal attachment of the uh, uterus. Just uh, remember that much. Paravaginal attachment of the uterus. I mean, sorry, vagina. Now, uh, the vagina has its, has its own uh, somewhat support, somewhat uh, connective tissues, which keeps them in its position, okay? So that's what the level two support means, okay? Now, the level three support is uh, the perineal body, okay, and the superficial and deep perineal muscles, okay. And collectively, this is support the distal one third of the vagina and intraterus, and the damage leads to, okay, we will we'll see that later, okay. 
ओके सो वजैना ऑल्सो हेज टायर वन टायर टू एंड टायर थ्री सपोर्ट ओके ओके सी हेयर नेट्स सी दिस पिक्चर सो दिस इज द वजाइनल कैनल ओके एंड द अब इज यूट्रस ना this part where the vagina is resting is it is resting in the levator plate okay and uh, okay and the this uh, the vaginal canal it has its own para vaginal attachments okay it has its own tone and this thing is attached to the lateral lateral there is a uh, fascia called arcus tendinosus fascia pelvis atfs ATFP, okay, arcus tendinosus fascia pelvis. It is attached laterally to this thing. Okay, this is the main support of the levator any muscles. There is a thickening in the outer uh, uh, outer what do you call the outer part of the muscle. Okay, there is thickening in that part and it is called as arcus tendinosus. Okay, and it forms allows the arc to form. Okay, so <coughs> so the name arises and this vagina is attached to this arcus tendinosus okay you can see the arcus tendinosus here in the other picture okay this is the uh, levator plate okay, now now we are done with the anatomy now what are the risk factors of uh, prolapse okay why does prolapse occur Why does prolapse occur in some people and not in everyone? Okay, so firstly, I would like to do some anatomical factors. Okay, now the gravitational stress due to this is from your book. Okay, gravitational stress due to human bipedal posture. Okay, the human is erect. Okay, in a we stand in two feet, not like uh, animals. Okay, who stand in four feet, and I think the animal have lesser chance of prolapse because of that. okay there is more gravitational pull up to the pelvic muscles in bipedal posture okay now enter inclination of the pelvis the pelvis is slightly enter inclined inclined okay next is stress of parturition parturition means the act of giving birth okay the stress of giving birth there is a damage to the muscles as well as nerves there and which will lead to the decrease in tone of the muscles of the pelvis mainly levator muscles okay and the next is pelvic floor weakness okay uh, due to the different hiatus hiatus means opening so there are three openings here and whenever there are opening in the some covering then the weakness is there okay next is uh, some genetic factors okay someone something like marfan syndrome okay in the in the marfan syndrome there is high chance of prolapse because the weakness of the muscles they have okay now next is clinical factors okay so this question can come okay what are the different risk factors of prolapse and the next is uh, predisposition factors for clinical factor acquired the same trauma to the uh, during vaginal delivery to the ligaments to endopelvic fascia to levator muscles to penile body to nerves okay to know good about this um, uh, this chapter you should know anatomy well okay so it's good to revise your anatomy today and the next is inborn weakness congenital okay these are the predisposing means uh, they may be uh, from before okay and the aggravating factors are post menopausal atrophy this is quite important okay after menopause what happens is there is there is decrease in estrogen content in the body of the woman every woman okay whenever they attend menopause then the estrogen in their blood is decreased and that will lead to decrease in collagen synthesis okay and that will ultimately lead to weakness in all the muscles okay so that will cause the atrophy of the muscles and as well as weakness and which will lead to prolapse okay and poor collagen tissue repair with age so with age also the collagen tissue repair is decrease that's why old people have wrinkles okay so th uh, this will also cause weakness in the muscles and which will ultimately lead to prolapse and the next is increased intra abdominal pressure due to chronic lung disease or constipation so whenever you have excessive coughing or due to excessive 
constipation, uh, there can be increased intra-abdominal pressure. Okay. And not only uh, due to these factors, there is also a factor like if there is any abdominal mass, okay, whenever there is a big uterus, let's imagine due to a fibroid uterus, okay, or, or any other uh, abdominal masses, okay, any due to any gastro gastro causes, okay, that can cause increased intra-abdominal pressure, which will ultimately lead to prolapse, okay. And now occupation. So if uh, a uh, like in our part of the country, who work, uh, people who work in the field, much more uh, will uh, will be uh, a good risk factor for prolapse. And the other are uh, undernutrition and obesity. Obesity is also a cause of increased in the intra-abdominal pressure. Okay. And the next is increased weight of the uterus, as in fibroid. Okay. So, did you understand the aggravating factors? Sir. Okay, good. Uh, now, types of genital prolapse, okay? So, there is a vaginal and uterine, but um, um, let's discuss it uh, differently, but usually they occur at the same time, okay? You can't have just uterine prolapse and no vaginal prolapse, okay? And you can't have just vaginal prolapse and there is no some degree of uterine prolapse will be there, okay? But just for understanding, we'll uh, study it uh, differently at the moment. And that's why we call it UV prolapse or uterovaginal prolapse, okay? So the vagina, there is anterior wall and posterior wall, okay? And in the anterior wall, there is something called as cystocele, okay? Cysto means urinary bladder. Cysto means urinary bladder, okay? So the upper two-third of the Vagina. If the there is weakness in the upper two third of vagina and there is prolapse, then that is called as cystocele. Okay, so and the lower one third, there is urethrocele. Okay, again I'll repeat these things occur simultaneously. Okay, you can't have just cystocele. Okay, that's very rare. Or you can't have just urethrocele, which is also quite rare. Okay, so you will have cysto and urethrocele in combination. Okay, usually. So again, I repeat, upper two-third cystocele, lower one-third urethrocele. Okay, now moving on to the posterior wall. Posterior wall, if you just go to the upper part of the, uh, upper part of this vagina, then there is vault. Okay, vault is the highest point of the vagina. Okay, so highest point of the vagina, usually we say vault, after we remove the uterus with cervix, okay? After an operation, if someone has their uterus or end cervix removed, then there is no cervix. So there is just vagina. And the highest point of that vagina is called vault, okay? So the prolapse of vault. So usually uh, we have vault prolapse after an operation to the uterus and cervix, okay? And the middle part of the posterior wall, there is rectocele, it's the rectum rectum seal okay and the next is uh, just the lower part of the uh, lower part of the vagina in the posterior wall then we have relaxed perineum okay it's called something called relaxed perineum okay just the perineum is quite relaxed usually you have this after uh, um, delivery of the baby if the epistotomy or the first degree second degree third degree perineal tears are not sutured well. Have you ever heard about episiotomy? Somebody answer? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So that episiotomy wound, if you don't repair, let's say someone delivered at home and they had a second degree tear involving the muscles as well, and they didn't repair it, okay? And they come to your, they come to see you after, let's say, six months. Then in that uh, patient, you can see something called relaxed perineum. Okay. Now, so in the, in the posterior part, you, posterior upper part of the uterus, then you will have something called interocele. Okay. Interocele, we'll discuss in detail later. So in the we have to remember this thing also. Okay. So again, just to revise. Enter compartment, you have 
cystocil, urethrocil, cystourethrocil, posterior you have recto, intero, and relaxed perineum. Okay. Okay, now degrees of uterine prolapse. This is the most important part of today's lecture. So, uh, in the OPD, what we do, whenever we see a patient, we categorize the prolapse, how bad the prolapse is. Okay, whether it is just a first degree or it's a fourth degree. Okay, and that way we plan our management. Okay, so the first degree is, so uh, revise it. External os of the cervix should be at the level of ischial spine. We, we had discussed that earlier. So if it is just below the ischial spine, the uterus descends down its normal anatomical position. Okay. Then it's first degree. So it had to be at the level of ischial spine, the external os of the cervix, but it is slightly below. So that, that's first degree for you. So the next is second degree. So secondary, what happens is, the external ox, os produced up to the level of vagina or the introitus, okay, vaginal introitus, okay. So, in second degree prolapse, if you examine the patient, then you won't see the prolapse hanging outside, okay, it will be inside. But if you ask her to cough, then you might see it come out, okay. So, second degree is done. Now, the third degree. The third degree is the external os produced out of the vaginal introitus. Just focus on the words. That's up to, up to the external os. I mean, the introitus is second degree. If it comes out, like if you examine the patient and you can see the cervix outside, it's third degree. Okay, cervix or and the vagina. I mean the uterus. And the fourth degree is whole of the uterus is out. Okay, with the fundus is out, okay, of the introitus, then it's first degree, and it's also called as procedentia. Okay, and this is uh, quantitative grading, okay. This we can do in OPD quickly and easy way, and this is quantitative. You need to measure with your scale or something like that, okay. So here, it's quite, it's not important for you, but just to understand, this is stage one. It is something same as that. Okay, in stage two, it is minus one centimeter to plus one centimeter of the introitus. It is minus one centimeter to plus one centimeter of the introitus. In stage three, it is outside. It is more than one centimeter outside. And stage four is the fundus is also outside. Okay. Now, clinical features. So, what will be the chief complaint of the patients who have prolapse? So, there is feeling of something coming down per vaginum. There is some mass in the vaginum. There is backache, a pain, a dyspareunia. Okay? And urinary symptoms. You can have urinary symptoms. Usually, if there is cystocil. See, this is a very good picture of a cystocil. So, what happens is, this is the anterior wall of the vagina. This is the posterior wall. So what happened to the anterior wall? It has prolapsed outside. And uh, along with the vagina, the uh, urinary bladder has followed it. Okay. So obviously, the urine in this part won't be able to come out of this urethra. So there will be urinary retention, frequency, more chances of urinary infection due to stasis of the urine. Okay. All those things. Now, this is the rectocele. This is the rectum. This is the posterior wall of the vagina. And what has happened is the rectum has followed the vagina out. So what happened here? What happens here is there is there might be some constipation. Sometimes even the patient has to push this thing inside with her finger to defecate. Okay. And this is cystocele. This is interocele. So there's a big difference between rectocele and interocele, okay? So in rectocele, the posterior wall of vagina has prolapsed due to the wall weakness and the rectum has come down. But in interocele, what happens is, just imagine there is a uh, peritoneum covering here. Okay? So peritoneum is here. So what happens is the, the posterior wall of the uterus, uterosacral ligament and all 
which we had learned in the uh, which we had learned earlier the uterosacral ligament is weakened due to which the uh, this bowel loops okay bowel loops means this let's say the uh, this small intestine jejunum ileum these things are coming to the vaginal wall okay so it's quite different okay so you shouldn't be confused with rectocele and interocele we'll learn how to differentiate that later now whenever you examine a patient with uh, this thing then wh what you will see first you will do general examination bmi always or not okay very malnourished or not signs of myopathy neuropathy very important chronic airway disease very important abdominal mass we discussed it very important cystocele there is a bulge in the anterior vaginal wall which is which in, which increases with straining okay like a hernia okay so what you can do is and there can be this uh, urinary incontinence okay there the urine may escape out okay due to the prolapse okay uh, the next is relaxed perineum there can be gaping of the relaxed perineum gaping of the intraeters there may be gaping of the intraeters okay with old scar in the perineal uh, due to incompletely healed perineal tears okay and the rectocele and interocele okay so this is a good point when two conditions exist together this rectocele and interocele there is bulging of the posterior vaginal wall with a transverse sulcus sulcus means khaldo between the two this is visualized by retracting the anterior vaginal wall with a speculum with a speculum you will hold the anterior vaginal wall up and then you can see the posterior wall nicely and in the posterior wall you will see the below and above there are two bulges with a khaldo in between okay the below bulge is the rectocele the above bulge is the interocele okay in interocele the bulging is close to the cervix and it cannot be reached by the fingers can it be reached by the fingers somebody answer me if you uh, do the pore rectal examination of the patient can you reach the bulge of the interocele somebody answer when you do pore rectal examination can you reach the bulge of the interocele क्यों सुतियो क्या सब पे जाना है समबडी आंसर इफ यू डोंट नो सेड आई डोंट नो नो आइडिया सर no idea so that means you didn't understand the difference between rectocele and interocele see rectocele means rectum the rectum is coming down from the posterior wall okay so if you do a pore rectal examination your finger can reach up to the rectum and the finger will come anteriorly here okay but interocele is something else see here it is there is a uterosacral ligament here and there is peritoneum it is something related to the peritoneal cavity and from the peritoneal cavity there is weakness in the posterior uh, ligament due to which there is a hernia and it is called interocele and your finger will reach here never okay it is somewhere i think 2 meters 3 meters above okay now do you understand now bujhyo aile bujhyo अगि कसले बोले है रेक्टोसिल यहीं तल हो तल को एकदम तल रेक्टम तो पर रेक्टल एक्जामिनेसन कर सर्जरी में गए हाला रेक्टम में गए ये अमला जान तर इंटरसिल यो यूट्रस भूट्रस को यहाँ पछाड़ी लिगामेंट के पेरिटोनल कैविटी का सामान यहाँ बड़ा झर्ने हो तेरह इंटरसिल इज क्वाइट डिफ्रेंट तेरह यहाँ तो अमला पुग्न तो चांस भैन नहीं है ते भर 
पर रेक्टल जैसे इंटर सील कि रेक्टर सील कन्फ्यूज भर रेक्टल एक्जामिनेसन कर हेने इफ योर फिंगर कम्स टू द लेवल अफ दैट प्रोलैप्स देन इट इज रेक्टो सील इफ इट डजन कम इफ इट इज नट रिटेड टू योर फिंगर लेवल देन इट्स इंटर सील हाई कहीं कहीं कन्फ्यूज हो हमें डिफ्रेन्सिट कर पर्ने होता हाई तब ओके सीस्टो सील भेक्टो सील इंटर सील ओके यहाँ फिर डिफ्रेन्स हाई तो मजाम में तिमार क्वेश्चन राख् सकु ये इंटर सील एंड रेक्टो सील सो इट इज सीचुएसन इट्स हाई अप अराउंड द पोस्ट अफ हर्निक्स हाई हाई अप एट इंपोर्टेन्ट कुछ अर्क लो डाउन हाई अर्क इंसपेक्शन अब इंटर सील में इंटेस्टाइन भग पेरिस्टाइलि अब रेक्टम में तो पेरिस्टाइलि होते नो इसमें यस हाई तक पोस्टर भजन वॉल में इफ इफ यू किप द सीम स्पेकुलम देन स्लोली विड्र सीम स्पेकुलम इंटर सील विल इमर्ज फ्रम हाई अप अगेन ये हाई अप के कुछ इस फिर बना है भिजिबल आफ्टर फुल विड्रल अफ द स्पेकुलम हाई तो मथि बड़ तल आ स्पेकुलम आए हैं फर्स्ट में इंटर सील देखि अब एकदम तल आए देखियो रेक्टो सील हो हाई एंड द नेक्स्ट इज पर रेक्टल एक्जामिनेसन सो द लुप्स अफ इंटेस्टाइन कैन बी फेल्ट इन बिट्विन द एक्जामिंग फिंगर्स बट फिंगर्स कैन बी अपोज है टू फिंगर्स कैन बी अपोज सो इफ यू डू एन पर रेक्टल एक्जामिनेसन यू माइट फील द इंटर सील अफ अब बट यू कैनट अपोज योर फिंगर्स ओके यू कैनट ब्रिंग योर फिंगर्स एंटीरियरली एंड अल्सो यू कैनट अपोज योर फिंगर्स अफ योर अदर हैंड ओके बट इन रेक्टो सील द टू फिंगर्स कैन बी अपोज सो नौ फर्स्ट डिग्री यू ट्रेन रिसेंट अगर भाई ओके सो व्हाट आर द डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस ओके देर आर फोर डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस ओके द फर्स्ट इज गार्डनर सीस्ट ओके इट इज द रिटेन्सन सीस्ट अफ द रिमेन्ट अफ उल्फियन डक्ट व्हाट इज उल्फियन डक्ट Do you know your embryology? Ulfian ducts forms what? You need to know these things, okay? So rugosities of the overlying vaginal mucosa are lost. Vaginal mucosa over it becomes tense and shiny, non-reducible, and no impulse on coughing. All are different from prolapse, okay? So I'll show you the picture. So this is retents. I mean, Gartner cyst, which is a type of retention cyst. So it looks like prolapse. Oh, there is a cystocil if you see from far, but if you Uh, see close by. This is a cyst in the vaginal wall. Okay, so due to the cyst, the rugae, there is a rugae in the vagina that will be lost. It is shiny, and there is no impulse on coughing like a hernia. Okay, whereas in cystocil, there is impulse on coughing. Okay, the size of the cystocil increases due to cough. Okay. Now the next is fibroid polyp. In fibroid polyp. The mass is saggy. The fibroid. What is fibroid polyp? First, fibroid polyp is fibroid originating inside the uterine cavity. Okay, but due to formation of polyp, this thing comes down out. Uh, out. Okay, due to a long stalk, it comes out of the cervix, and it may come out of the vagina as well, and which may confuse us with uh, prolapse. So here, what happens is, so this is a fibroid polyp. Okay. Before an operation, so what happened is there is prolapse as well as fibroid polyp, and this is the cervix here. The whole of the uh, vaginal can. This is something called prosidensia. Okay, this is a fourth degree prolapse. The uterus part and the cervix, everything is outside, and along with that, from the cervix, there is this uh, mass. Okay, so no opening visible in the leading part. Because there is no cervix, the leading part is a mass of fibroid, so there is no opening of cervix. Okay, mass is saggy. Okay. Now, now the next is congenital elongation of cervix. So someone might have a long cervix. Okay, so, and that might confuse us with prolapse. So what happens is the uh, form. We have to see the fornices. So what are the fornices? There is anterior fornix, posterior fornix. And lateral fornices. So fornix is the part between the cervix and the vagina. Fornix is the part between. Fornix is the part between cervix and vagina. Okay. So anterior and the cervix is in the middle of the apex of the vagina. So in all direction there are some parts. Okay. That are called as. Those are called as 
furnaces. Okay, so the furnaces will be deep. Okay, so uh, let me show you a picture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this, uh, if this is if this this is a prolapse, obviously, but if this was a case of elongated cervix, then this would not be there. Rather, this uh, cervix would come down. Okay, and this part, this fornix, anterior fornix, posterior fornix would be in its own position. Okay, it wouldn't it wouldn't have come down. Okay, okay. So if this was a case of cervical elongation, the cervix would be long coming outside. Okay, but the fornixes would be in their own position. But in case of prolapse. The fornix will come down with with the whole uterus. Okay, the whole of the uterus comes down with fornix. So fornix will be somewhere, somewhere here. Okay, so sometimes even the fornix might be coming outside. Okay, so fornix will not be in its own position in case of prolapse. Whereas in case of cervical elongation only, the fornix will be in its own anatomical position. Now there is something called chronic inversion. So chronic inversion means inversion means the uterus is inside out. Okay, it usually happens after vaginal delivery if you don't do the active management of third stage. Okay, and if you pull the uh, um, placenta very hard, then the uterus might might be inside out. The inside of the uterus might become out. Okay, so what happens is. Uh, the broad, there is no opening visible on the leading part, and and is also saggy, and the internal examination reveals cervical rim on the top around the mass. Okay, do you understand that? Okay. So chronic inversion is also a differential diagnosis. So in, it's important here. If you do the per rectal examination, then there is absence of uterine body and a cop like depression might be felt. Okay. Uterine body is absent because it has come out. Okay. It has inverted. Okay. They're inside out. The inside part of the uterus is coming out. Okay. So so these four differential diagnoses you have to keep in mind. Now the complications. Okay. So complications can be surface keratinization, keratinization. So what happens is this is the prolapse part. Okay. This is the there is cervix here. Okay. This is the vaginal opening, and this is the uh, ulcer, decubitus ulcer. Okay. So what are the complications? There can be surface keratinization, okay, due to this is mu. Eh, sorry, this is the cervix, okay. There is something, some opening here, and uh, there are decubitus ulcers. There can be ulcer can develop. There, are, there can be some urinary symptoms. Incarceration, incarceration means the blood supply might be uh, stopped, and there might be some kind of incarceration and cancer. It's quite rare. But it can happen. Okay. So now, what is the class? 30 summer, Okay. 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 Okay.